Tina Gay in Jarwin. Hello everyone. I'd like to acknowledge that we're filming today on the traditional lands of the Gumbangi people and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. And I extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people watching the film today. G'day, my name's Jane Eels. I'm one of the team leaders of the Local Land Services Riverbank Rehabilitation Project, which is jointly funded by the New South Wales and Australian Government under the Disaster Recovery Funding Arrangements. The project is to build resilience of flood damaged riverbanks for future flood events. Today we're in Gummer Reserve on the mid-north coast of New South Wales. We have Laurel Creek in the background, which flows into the Nambucca River downstream. Now you've watched the first two videos and understand the key concepts of river behaviour and the different types of erosion, we'll give you some insight into a range of options you can do yourself now to manage riverbank erosion and prevent impacts from future floods. If you notice vegetation debris that's squashing native regrowth on the riverbank and it's small enough to move by hand, you can lift it up and move it aside. Otherwise, it's best practice to let sleeping logs lie. Large woody debris provides fish habitat and can increase bank stability and reduce erosion. To address gullying, you can divert or slow overland runoff with hay bales and star pickets, coil logs or sandbags. These simple techniques are effective for small scale gullying, but for larger scale gullying or bed erosion, hybrid solutions of hard engineering and revegetation will be required. So you should seek guidance from a river practitioner. Keep stock away from the riverbank and out of the adjoining riparian zone. They may eat weeds, but they also spread them. Manage stock access by installing fencing and off-stream watering, or at least limit access to one point and stabilise it. After a flood, it's easy to be fooled that the slate's been washed clean and all the weeds have gone away. Beware of the seeds lurking below the flood mud. It's important to keep an eye out for emerging weeds and manage them as soon as you see them poking through. Target priority weeds such as vines, camphor laurel seedlings, tropical soda apple and thorny weeds. Install monitoring pegs one to five metres away from the erosion edge and take photos to track erosion over time. It's important to remember that aggradation and erosion are natural river processes. When the riparian zone is wide enough and provides a buffer on each side, it's natural for the banks of most rivers to move laterally from side to side constantly adjusting over time. As long as there's no bed erosion occurring, some erosion sites will find a state of equilibrium. In a river setting, that state of equilibrium is not static. Rivers are dynamic natural systems that change over time. The first question river practitioners always ask themselves is what would happen if we did nothing? In practice, that's not very accurate. So I've changed it to bolster it and let it be. By bolster, I mean the things we've just covered, manage stock access and do weed control. In the right conditions, sometimes these actions are all it takes for the riverbank vegetation to regenerate and for the erosion to stabilise. You'll probably need a river practitioner to assess your site and help you make this decision. If there's no mature native trees nearby to provide seeds and you can't see many native seedlings starting to grow, it's good to revegetate. Scatter native grass seed over bare ground and plan for planting a mix of local native shrubs and trees of different heights in spring. This graph shows rehabilitation effort on the left and resilience on the right. It shows that as the rehabilitation matures, effort reduces and resilience increases. For more details about all these actions, there's lots of guidance resources designed to help you to help yourself. Here's a good one for the Richmond catchment. And if you search our local land services website, ask your local council or land care group, you should be able to find some for your local area. For advice and support to manage riverbank erosion on your property, contact your local land services office by phoning 1300 795 299 or send an email to riverrehabproject at lls.nsw.gov.au. Send your contact details, property address and photos of the erosion site and we'll use that information to start doing an impact assessment. We'll call you to do an initial desktop assessment and if necessary, we may do a site visit before providing management recommendations. If you're able to fund works yourself, we can provide guidance and referrals to contractors. Otherwise, the best thing to do is get in touch with us so we can start doing impact assessments 
provide advice on best practice and keep you updated if funding opportunities become available. We've just touched on a range of best practice actions you can do now to manage riverbank erosion on your property. Some erosion scenarios require higher bridge solutions of hard engineering and revegetation. The next video tells more about these options and what's involved. <laughs>